Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nish Kumar Singh and you are watching ISTQB Foundation series. We are in the last chapter of this particular series and we are talking about tool support for testing. This is in continuation with the first topic, what we have been already through. And this is the part two of the first tutorial of the topic 6.1 that is test tool considerations and we are going to continue that so it's just being it's uh, having a lot of content we are just trying to make it uh, in two different parts so that we can concentrate on each one of them in more details the next thing what we're talking about the test tool consideration is the benefits and risk involved in using a test automation now generally it is a core responsibility with the test manager to consider that how the tool will be selected for the organization and at the same time also look for what are the benefits which we are going to achieve at the same time also look for the risks involved in using a test automation tool now it's not limited to test automation tools sometimes it is also possible that you're talking about any other automation or test tools which we can use within the organization for a project let's quickly look at the benefits on the screen right now we have got some limited uh, benefits which could be associated with any type of test tools that is like reduction in repetitive manual work where we say that if you want to read on certain tests like regression testing, it could be hectic to do manually. So we prefer to make use of a test automation tool, which would reduce your efforts to a very high extent. Greater consistency and repeatability is another aspect of test automation tools, where we run a particular test for several times, then we still get the same result and thus we get consistency in the execution outcomes. And also repeatability becomes easy with help of automation tool. More objective assessments in case of the test automation or even any talk about test uh, management tools. The static measures and coverage or traceability becomes quite simple and easy to do with help of the tools, whereas it would be difficult to do manually. Easier access to the information about testing as the tools are allowing you to manage the resources very well in a systematic manner, of course, would help you to have a well arranged uh, information system where it will be easy to access the information from. Now let's look at the next thing where we're talking about the uh, risk involved in using a tool. So of course, there are a lot of risk involved in using the tool where we say that, uh, for example, expectation for the tool may be unrealistic. You thought that it would be easy to use and save your time, but uh, setting up the tool itself would take a long time. So a manager should consider similar points like this before adopting a tool for the organization that are we ready for it and including the cost and time taken to uh, you know, get the benefits from the tool. And where you can see the second point says the same thing, that is the time, cost and effort for the initial introduction of the tool may be underestimated. So you need to have a proper calculation done before you can really procure a tool for the organization. And at the same time, do some estimation involved to measure that what would be the cost and other thing involved. Uh, for utilizing the tool and achieving the benefits from that. The effort required to maintain the test assets would generated by the tool may be underestimated. So generally, if you are a user of an automation tool, you would know that what the test assets are. It creates a lot of log files, which would be referred as a part of execution log, or also to measure that uh, what execution has taken place. And in case your execution fails, then these test assets would only help you to understand that what went wrong. Sometimes it is also like that architecture which is created by each test, that is the log files and other supporting files for each automation test would be difficult to maintain. The tool may be relied on too much, uh, where you talk about, uh, you know, talking about doing everything by the tool itself, like uh, the automation tool will not just, uh, you have to procure and start working on it, Sometimes we say that it is also there are some more manual activities which would be still done manually. For example, getting the resources, associating the resources to the tool and also preparing the test script and so on. So you don't have to really rely too much on the tool where we need to understand that what could be other things which would be still requiring the manual efforts. <laughs> Version control of the test assets may be neglected. Yes, exactly. Now, every time you run a test, of course, there's a new test asset which has created, or even if you repeat a particular test for several iterations, there are new test assets which are generated. Now, if you ignore the version control for that, it would become difficult to uh, do the traceability between them. Because say, for example, if you run a test with three iterations and two of them pass and one fail, then of course, mapping the two assets 
would be easy to find out the issue rather than uh, looking at the entire code. Relationship and interoperability issues uh, between the critical tools may be neglected. Generally, some of the tools uh, come with the uh, interoperability option where interoperability means that data exchange between the tools. So say, for example, from a particular vendor, you are having uh, two tools and uh, the tools are like test management tool and test automation tool. And of course, these two tools can be integrated where test management tool can control the execution of automation and automation test can be directly logged in the test management tool. But just being unaware of this feature, you might procure two tools from two different vendors and do all those manual things uh, still manually, which could have been automated using the interoperability feature of uh, two tools from the same vendor. The tool vendor may go out of business. Uh, of course, there are vendors and from the real time examples, you can experience from some of the vendors that uh, you just uh, procure something today and tomorrow he shut down this office. Then of course, there'll be no support provided to you at the point when you need it. <clears throat> the vendor may provide a poor response. It's not mandatory that they always shut down their office. Sometimes they are open, but when you need them, they do not help you or they do not have a good communication or maybe good technical support on the tool, what you're looking at. So sometimes you can experience, experience a poor response for the support as well, or upgrades or defect fixes on the tool, what you're using. And you have to consider these things before selecting the tool for the organization, because you cannot just take that risk within the project. An open source uh, project may be suspended. For example, some of the open source tools can be withdrawn by the vendor saying that we are no longer modifying it or adding any kind of update to the source so on. So you need to be very careful with that as well. Uh, on the other side, when you talk about a new platform or technology may not be supported as you talk about Windows 8, which was a failure. Of course, there are things that uh, the new tools were not supported and it is still unstable when you talk about Windows 10. Uh, there are tools with their automation testing tools which are still not stable with uh, having the inability to support a new platform. And maybe to some extent, we also say that there may be no clear ownership of the tool, where generally we say that ownership is one internal person in your organization who takes the responsibility of uh, taking over the tool and assisting the entire organization with like an administrator to support with fixing and setting up the tool as well. So these are some quick points which you need to take care from the benefits and the risk involved uh, being a manager before selecting the tool for the organization. One last thing from this section is about some special considerations for the execution tools, where we have, when you talk about automation testing tools, we have certain automation frameworks which could reduce your effort to a very high extent. Now, when you talk about data-driven testing, it is generally about uh, repetition, where we say that a particular set of instruction has to be iterated for multiple set of data. Then you really don't have to copy paste those line of script again and again for the number of times you want to run it. Instead, you can just write it for once for all, and instead of hard coding the values which you want to feed, you replace it with a, var a variable or parameter, which will be equated to an Excel sheet or any such source of data from where it will be picked automatically. And the test will be driven by the number of data what you have given. So whatever rows you have provided, it will automatically be repeated for that many iterations. Whereas keyword driven testing, where keywords are used in the test case uh, sheet, instead of like having any kind of unique recognition. So you can also have a unique keyword identified for each test. Now, generally keyword driven testing allows you to run hand-picked random test cases out of the entire test suite and could help you to do a lot of minimal effort on the regression execution, where you can just call those keywords what you're interested in to run in the entire suite. Other than that, when you talk about the modeling tools also have certain features like it becomes easy to trace the requirements and have the changes being updated easily. Similarly, when you talk about the test management tools, it also helps you to have certain good benefits like traceability becomes easy, integrated environment, people can access from anywhere to anywhere, like they can be geographically distributed and have a common repository to upload all the information. So it, it becomes easy to have a version control as well within the tool. So you need to take care of such benefits within the uh, uh, management tools if you are utilizing one of them. So 
that's all from here in this tutorial team. Uh, we'll be coming back with one more tutorial about this chapter and we'll be closing on the series. That is with the last topic of this chapter and this series as well. So stay tuned for that. In case you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe because we'll be coming back with another tutorial set and series after this. And we also have sample questions coming up. So do not miss that because that's the last chapter of this uh, series and would also require additional effort to understand that. So till then, uh, just explore it. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach me. Comment below. I'll be there to assist you. And uh, of course, I'll be coming back with another tutorial on the last topic of this chapter. Thanks for watching the video team. Happy learning.